Exciting news from WWDC 23. Introducing Swift Data, the game-changing framework that's replacing core data for Swift UI. Say goodbye to complexity. Swift Data is super easy to work with, providing seamless data management for Swift UI apps. Designed for both newbies and pros, Swift Data integrates flawlessly with Swift UI, boosting your productivity and efficiency. Sync your data across devices, create easy CRUD operations, set up relationships, perform advanced queries effortlessly. Swift Data has it all. Working with Swift Data is a delight, and today we are going to take a look at the CRUD operations and also relationships. Make sure to check out store.developer.com slash community, where you can join SwiftUI Nation, SwiftUI developers, just like you are waiting for you. Make sure to check out store.developer.com slash community. Now, today we are going to talk about Swift data, and uh, this is what we are going to build out. First of all, make sure that you have downloaded Xcode Beta 15, and of course, if you are following along this tutorial after the fall, uh, make sure that Xcode 15 is actually what you are using. So uh, here is what we are going to create. Let me just remove that. So we have categories and then those categories will have items. I have taken this idea from my previous core data uh, um, uh, two part series uh, where I talk about how to set up exactly this part, uh, but in core data. Make sure to check that out. Uh, the video link will be somewhere here and also down in the description. So uh, we are going to have categories. So uh, let's create one. And uh, as of this beta version, uh, typing inside uh, the simulator is really, really uh, cumbersome. So what I'm going to do is just copy out some stuff from wherever I want and just pasting it in. So it will not uh, like uh, stand still, you know, it's just uh, 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 not that good with uh, the text field. So we have this category, uh, a nation, and then here we are going to create an item and uh, let's just paste that in and let's create that item. Now you could edit this item. So uh, let's just uh, copy this out and uh, paste that inside there. And as you can see, it's already uh, been updated. Uh, also, you could delete that. Let's just delete it. Let's go back to categories, same thing. And uh, let's just undelete this. So basically, when we delete a category, it will delete also its items. And this is what we are going to build out today from scratch. Well, nearly from scratch, I have set up an Xcode project right over here. Uh, it's again, Xcode 15 beta, and um, it's uh, really not that much. All I created here is the files. I added the files. And then under the content view, I have some UI and some functionality, not the functionality, just the functions uh, laying it out. And then we have the category view. Okay, basically that's it. Other uh, files are just uh, bare open and we are going to type our code in. Now, this project was started not being selected uh, as the, sort, the data source as Swift data. This is from scratch. So if you start uh, with that check mark with the template from Xcode, then you will uh, get some extra stuff uh, that, you know, uh, maybe you are migrating, you will not have uh, then. So yes, we are going to start a project. Are you a SwiftUI developer looking to connect with like-minded individuals and level up your skills? Join SwiftUI Nation, our vibrant community dedicated to all things SwiftUI. Inside the community, we host weekly Zoom events where we dive deep into SwiftUI topics, share insights, and discuss the latest trends. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, you'll find valuable resources, networking opportunities, and a supportive environment to enhance your SwiftUI journey. Don't miss out on this amazing chance to connect, learn, and grow with fellow SwiftUI enthusiasts. Join SwiftUI Nation today and become part of the thriving SwiftUI community. Go to store.rebeloper.com slash community. So first thing that you have to do is create your model. So let's just create our item right over here. First of all, we want to import SwiftUI and then uh, Swift 
data. There we go. Now, uh, for our models, we are going to use classes. I know we used on this channel quite a lot of, of uh, time structs, but this time we need to uh, have a class and it will be called an item. And this class has to have a macro. Uh, I'm going to have a separate video on the channel about macros. These are powerful new tools, uh, new things and powerful new tool for uh, us developers as of iOS 17. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to uh, get notified when that comes up. So the macro that we have right over here is at model. So your class item, your model has to has at model uh, as its macro. Okay, so uh, right over here, uh, we are going to have a value of type string and uh, var uh, time stamp because we are going to uh, uh, sort, uh, well, yeah, we're going to sort all of these items according to their timestamp and that will go for the categories also. Okay. So uh, because this is a class, we need to create an initializer. So just type out in it and uh, Xcode will autofill this. But I'm going to do a little bit more. This is just a basic uh, 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 model. Uh, first of all, for the timestamp, I'm going to remove that from the initializer and I'm going to add a dot now uh, right over here. And for the value, well, uh, you will see when, but in some cases, I want to initialize this model as kind of an empty item uh, with a value of an empty string. So I'm just going to do that uh, right over there. Uh, also, I want the value to be unique. So another powerful uh, property wrapper right over here at, at oh, sorry, at attribute and this will be dot unique. Okay, so that's our item model. Let's create our category. Uh, what actually I, what I'm going to do is just copy all of this out because the category is kind of the same. So uh, we want to make this a category class. We have the value, we have the timestamp and we have the same initializer, but the categories have items in them. And this is where the magic of relationships in Swift data comes in. So uh, we want to create a relationship and we want to have a delete rule. Uh, we just go dot, the scale denied, nullify. But in our case, whenever the category is being deleted, we want to cascade that deletion onto the items themselves. So uh, that's why the deletion rule is cascade var items of type array of item and believe it or not this is all you have to do for a one-to-many relationship in this case from the category one category to many items it's really amazing okay and that's it for our models next next let's uh, go into our app file and uh, set up these items. So what you want to do, first of all, uh, of course, you need to import Swift data and uh, you want to have a model container for, and we are going to add in an array of our models. So in our case, it's item.self, comma, category.self. And that's it. No persistent controller to set up. All you have to do is just set up your model container. Now, I do know that we are going to navigate over here. So I'm just going to wrap this around a navigation, navigation stack, just like that. And I'm going to add this model container onto the navigation stack, not just the content view. Okay, we have set up our app file. Now it's time to, uh, set up some other files uh, with these items. So the first thing that uh, we could do in the CRUD operations is, you know, just create. So let's start off with the create category. Uh, here we have the create category view, as you can see, just the brand new Swift UI view. What we are going to do is uh, have a form with a text field for the category name, the value of that category, and a button to create it. 
that's it simple as that so first of all uh, what I'm going to do is just add in here the, the properties that this view will use and first of all I want to create a kind of a placeholder on this view for the category that's going to be saved and I'm going to do that in a private state variable so category uh, and this is a category and you know I talked about creating that initializer with an empty string value a default empty string value well this is where it comes into place uh, no the default value for this state category is the one with a value of empty string which is fine okay so next up I want to grab the uh, environment so right over here we have set up the model container that's because we are going to access like we have in core data the view context here we have the model context so that is at environment and the key path is dot uh, model context there we go private var and uh, I'm just going to name it model context also you could just name it context or maybe view context for those who come from core data but I think embracing the new uh, language is uh, the best okay also I want to dismiss this view when I you know just going to pop this as a sheet uh, and uh, I want to dismiss it so that is with the environment of dismiss nothing new right over here so uh, let's create our form so this will be a form there we go and this form will have a text field okay and uh, it will have a title and text the title would be category okay and here comes the fun part you can actually add this category as a binding and then save it so let's just have category right over there so now whenever uh, sorry category dot value because you know we need a string not just a category and uh, then let's create our button to save this so let's have our button with a title of create and uh, then in the action I'm going to grab the model context and then just insert this model and uh, that is our category you know the state variable that we have created uh, of course we also want to uh, dismiss this uh, uh, you know just uh, uh, slide down the sheet and also I'm going to have a navigation title of create category nice so it's as easy as that you just grab the model context and insert your new model you don't have to save this at all it's automatically saved which is right amazing so uh, now that we have our create category view let's jump into the create item view because in this case uh, let me just uh, uh, go right over there in this case we want to create an item for a specific category I know we have already set up uh, the uh, right over here under the category the relationship but uh, how would we use this inside our view so first of all we need to have access to that category where we are going to put that item onto that needs to be accessed from Swift data and to be able to do all of the CRUD operations like magically we are going to use the bindable property so at bindable var category of type category okay so this is how we are binding that category to our view also we want to approach the same uh, way the how we are adding the data so we're going to have a private state item and that would be item uh, the default value and also the dismiss uh, environment okay uh, please note that here we don't need the uh, model context that's because we are not going to use it and uh, for now I'm just going to remove the preview um, you know just to not that not have that error we would just need to add those default category 
uh, in there. Okay, so now let's create our form. Well, actually, what I'm going to do, just to save on time, I'm just going to copy this out and paste it in there because basically is the same thing. We do need an item for our title and we are going to bind the item value. Uh, we are still going to create. Now, model context does not exist and we still also want to dismiss after we have created that and we are going to create the item. That's the navigation title. Now, how can we add, create and add this item? Uh, and, uh, and you know, create it onto the categories items list. We just go category dot items dot append item. Mind blow. It's that simple as that. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go anything more. You don't have to uh, insert to the model uh, context. You don't have to save the context. It's it's as simple as that. Okay, so that's how we create. Now, how do we CRUD, create, update? How do we update? So let's go into the update category view. Now, the category, again, uh, as I told you, needs to be accessed right over here in this view. So again, we are uh, using the bindable. So at bindable var category of type category. Okay, uh, here, uh, let me just create another form. Form, there we go. And let's add a text field of uh, category, that's our title. And the text, well, because this is a bindable, we can just go dollar sign category dot value. And uh, just for fun, we are going to have a navigation title of update category. Now, wasn't that simple. All we needed to do is bind have with the bindable, the category, and then we can just access it and change its value inside the text field, of course. It's mind blow. It's it's really really fun and, and enjoyable to use. Now, uh, yeah, let me just remove the preview provider. The update item view is the same thing. Let me just copy this out and paste it right over here and change this to update item view. Okay, we are going to have an item right over here of type item. And uh, we have the item as a title and the text is from the items value and update item as the navigation title. Simple as that. It couldn't get much more simpler. Now, let's, uh, we have set up the, uh, well, half of the CRUD operations. Uh, let's go for um, our read and delete. So for that, we are going to go into the category view right over here. And uh, on the category view, we are going to have a list of categories and we already set up our plus button uh, where we are going to show our create category view as a plus button. And we are going to add swipe gestures, uh, well, you know, uh, the default delete gesture and the swipe to the trailing part to the added gesture, you know, for the update. Okay, so uh, first of all, we need to add some properties right over here. Um, on the category uh, view is basically coming from the content view. On the content view, we have a list of the categories and right over here, we have a list of our items. So we do need a bindable for our category right over there. So let's start off with that. At bindable var category of type category. Great. And uh, next up, we want to, uh, well, we have these, this array of items and uh, whenever we want to edit one of them, we want to store that item inside the selected item state variable because we want to push a sheet with the item view modifier. So let's add that selected item. And that's a private state, private state, uh, selected item. And that would be of type 
item and that's an optional one and you will see how I'm going to bind this to that uh, particular sheet. And finally we need to have a model context so uh, at environment model context private come on private var model context let me just copy and paste it out okay so now we have uh, our category uh, it's time to uh, list out uh, those items of course we are going to use a for each inside our list and uh, what is the data well it's as simple as grabbing a, the categories items you don't have to worry about identifiables or just casting some sort of a fetch request uh, go ahead and check out my previous video on how to do this with core data it's quite amazing so we are going to get here back an item yeah okay and um, what do we want well basically just a simple text a text of item dot value and as you can see this is already not an optional in core data it's optional you don't have to unwrap it or create an extension on it uh, it's it's amazing okay so uh, next up what I want to do is uh, add the on delete so on delete and we are going to perform the delete offsets and i have already created uh, this function right over here uh, this will enable the uh, an on delete swipe gesture and i also want uh, on the other way i want to have an edit uh, type of delete so i'm going to add a swipe action uh, with an edge of uh, leading and allows full swipe uh, let's just go with true it doesn't really matter and on the content I'm going to add a button uh, and uh, this will be with an action and a label uh, the label the image of system name and pencil so we are going to actually edit this and right over here I'm going to say the selected item is equals this item on this cell and uh, next up we are going to set up our sheets so uh, for example this uh, trigger will uh, pop up that sheet okay so uh, we uh, should add also a navigation title right over here of the category dot value because you know we are inside the category view and uh, we should add uh, that sheet so right over here we are going to have a sheet and uh, then is presented let's just go yes this one is presented is create item view presented uh, and we need to bind this just bind this let me just move this a little bit up so we can see and then the content will be the create item view with a category of category you know the bindable that we have added uh, right on top okay this is when we are creating this will you know trigger the sheet of the create item view but uh, let's just tackle this selected item so whenever we want to edit this we are going to use the other sheet uh, view modifier with the item and content now the item will be that selected item uh, we are going to get that that item and then we are going to use the update item view uh, with the uh, sorry uh, yes the update item view with the item there we go so uh, that's it for presenting our views uh, next up uh, what we want is to add in actually our uh, for each inside our offsets so offsets dot for each and uh, here we are going to have an offset and uh, we are going to delete that item so we want to grab that item item at that offset item equals category dot items at that offset and we just go model context dot delete uh, delete this model so the 
item. And it's that easy to just delete. Now, because we have added that to the category.items array, I don't know if this is a bug or a feature, is this the way it's intended to work, but I found that you also, uh, so it's not actually removed uh, from that array. So uh, you would also want to have category.items.remove uh, at offsets. Okay, so yeah, maybe this will change, maybe not. Maybe this is the way it's intended to do with my current setup with the relationships. Uh, we will see. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will just take a look at that uh, and uh, follow up on, on that one. Okay, so basically that's how you would just want to uh, add uh, your category view. Now, finally, I know a lot of code, but we want to take a look at the content view where we have the list of the categories. So, uh, and this is where actually the read functionality comes from uh, our CRUD operations from Swift data. So, uh, let's, let's tackle uh, our uh, first thing and that is our query. So, we are reading our uh, models with the query. You know, we had the fetch request with core data. We are having the query right over now, uh, over here. And as you can see, there's quite a lot. We are going to use the one with the sort order and animation. Okay, uh, sort, uh, well, you can just hit option in there and uh, we don't need a filter right over here. We just need a sort. And uh, we are going to sort this according to the uh, category dot timestamp and the order would be reverse so the latest one on top and the animation uh, well let's just go for, with the default but you can change your animation if you want to so that's our query but it needs to have a name of course and that is private var uh, categories of an array of category and as simple as that really swift like i really enjoy uh, uh, writing these queries now another thing that uh, we need to add uh, also in here is whenever we select one of those categories and we are going to use again the sheet view modifier with the item so let's have a private state a variable of here well selected category and that will be an optional category. Okay, and finally, we do need the model context. So at environment, uh, model context, private var, model context. Nice. So we have set up all of our properties that we need right over here. Next up is uh, time to set up our list of categories and these needs to be navigatable. So let's just start off with our for each and the data is the categories. Uh, no uh, surprise there. We are going to have a category in. And uh, because this needs to be navigatable, I'm going to have a navigation link with the destination and label. This is uh, the easiest one and uh, perfect for our purposes. The text would be just the value of our category. So category, there we go, dot value. And uh, the navigation link will have the destination of category view with our category. And just a quick reminder over here, this is a bindable. So all of these are still tied, let's just call it like that, to the query. So whenever we update anything on the categories, be it that an item, this query will update itself, uh, therefore uh, this list too. Okay, so uh, let's just add the on delete real quickly. So on delete perform the delete offsets, okay? And uh, let's just add also the swipe action, uh, swipe action with the edges of leading true for the swipe and content 
again a button with a title of uh, well not title because i do need an image right over here so action and label and this will be an image of system name pencil uh, well small p right over there and the selected category equals category is our action for that button okay so we have that set up now it's time to add in our sheet for our and as you can see i already created the create category view it's you know uh, self uh, uh, it's really obvious and uh, we are going to add the sheet with the item and content for our selected category you know when we are updating uh, the content will be our category right over there and this will um, uh, yeah we do need to add this inside the navigation stack and i choose this to be with the presentation details of medium so i just copy that out and paste it in there and let's have up update category view with our category which is again a uh, bindable really nice and finally uh, for the delete functionality uh, because we are actually the uh, creating like inserting the categories into the model context uh, just deleting them from the model context will be just fine so right over here we just need to grab our category uh, equals our categories at that offset there we go and just go a model context dot delete our category and that's it uh, you know because this is not inside an array on another model great so that's all we have to do i know it was a lot of typing but now we have a fully functional code and fingers crossed everything i did type out uh, is correct make sure to check out also the chapters uh, down below i will make sure that uh, i uh, name them properly so now let's test it out we have the categories let's add a new one so um, yeah i'm just going to uh, grab here some dummy data so you know just to paste in and then let's just create as you can see there it is let's add a new one why not uh, maybe it's presented i know these names for the categories are really uh, dumb but uh, it will they will work so it's presented as you can see it's just put on the top let's go into the presentation details category so let's click on the plus now we are going to add an item and i already can see that i missed the navigation stack so i'm going to go into the category view and uh, right over here yeah uh, um, basically in both of them i'm going to add the navigation stack so uh, let's just copy this and paste it in there and copy and paste it in there okay so let's build and run uh, one more time and of course now we should see the two categories there we go uh, let's just go into the is presented why not let's click on there create item great uh, well this will be just an item uh, let's just paste that in there hopefully uh, in another beta this will be fixed and uh, maybe let's just add another one navigation title i know these uh, texts are really not that good for the items but you know it works so now what i want to do is uh well maybe change the navigation title we are going to add it this and you see update item and i'm going to paste the is presented in and you already saw that it's just changing it automatically we don't even have to click on a save button or anything like that also i want to delete so just click on delete right over there like that and it's presented it's presented that's only it okay now uh, what if i want to delete the whole category i can do that or edit this category maybe just make this also is presented as you can see now it's updated uh, we can just go in and also we can just delete this if we choose to if i build and run nothing will be there as expected now 
it's that easy to uh, use Swift data CRUD. You have learned how to create, read, and update and delete data with Swift data and also about the relationships. Now, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to check out how, what is new in Xcode 15 beta. The video is right over here.